Hey, welcome everybody. I'm International Master Sladgy, aka Sparkle Horse on Lee Chess. We um, we're in. I am living in Budapest, Hungary. I am an. I am living in Budapest, Hungary. All of you guys who are regulars know that. I'm just waking up. Um, I want to increase the rating a little bit here, but I'm not going to do that here in the stream because we're playing unrated games. I'm down to, to about 2325 rapid and 2416 blitz, so hopefully we get back up to about 2500 if I can. Um, but as I said many times, I don't, um, you know, I don't over really want to stress importance of ratings. So Gladys Troll said uh, he's watching a PlayStation commercial. That's cool, man. Very interesting. We've got challenges from Troll on a Roll, Nabil Hassan Chess, and Dear Santa Claus. Santa Claus yesterday playing during the uh, subscriber stream troll in a roll as well um actually were you here yesterday troll looking at my games um no i guess troll wasn't here yesterday all right let's start with this game here with troll in a roll chess 960 um i will play one or two chess 960 games and we're accepting challenges between five five three and um seven three so feel free to challenge any time control between 5, 3, 5, 4, 5, 5, 6, 3, 6, 4, etc. 7, 3 is the highest um, amount of time that we're going to allow. I used to do 8 plus 3, but it got a little bit long, so we've cut it down to 7 plus 3 for the max time control. Make sure the challenges are unrated. Um, I am at a little disadvantage. Like I think that the streaming definitely takes a little bit of uh, strength away from my play, so I don't like to... Um, to play rated when we're we're doing the challenges um yeah troll wasn't here yesterday for the subscriber stream yeah for some reason um nefidov suggested that i analyze a game from the world rapid a grishuk game and uh that seemed like something you would do troll we had a really interesting game um we analyzed that that alex grishuk played with with uh with white against um Oh man, this uh, what is his name? It's, I'm I'm totally spacing on the name. Um, I think he's Azari. Anyways, all right. So F four. It's a weird name. F four. What are we gonna do? It's chess nine sixty, not normal chess. I'm reaching for my C pawn here, like it's like a normal game. But we have to really think about this. Troll tends to play the opening pretty well. I think I'm going to play g6. Although if I do play g6, he can play f5. That doesn't look like a great move. Yeah, let's do it this way. Um, you know, if he plays f5, we just ignore it, probably. Um, it would be a waste of time. Wow, g4. Extremely aggressive play by Troll. Usually he's more reserved with the, the pawn moves. Um, yeah, so Grishuk had some weird preparation in this line of the Panov Botvinnik. Um, Harold Khan. It, it was actually in English, um, but it transposes to the Panov, and it's a line that I played myself with both colors. So I thought it was a really nice choice by by Nefidov um, to analyze this game. Grishuk had, I, from what I saw, actually prepared to play a queen sacrifice that he came up with, or the engine came up with in his preparations. And black was okay, but I think that it was difficult to play. Um, and black, you know, the weaker player went wrong. So anyways, we had some good analysis yesterday in the subscriber stream. All right, g4, very aggressive move. I'm not so worried about the pawns, just his bishops are well-placed, you know, on, on these uh, squares here, so. White is white. I wanna open my own bishop up. I mean, I could play f5, but how am I recapturing on f5 with the pawn? Playable to do f5. I thought d6 is interesting. What's the plan here? It's, it's kind of early to talk about a plan, isn't it? But um, I try to make sure that all my pieces can get into the game effectively. a7 looks like a weak point. That's going to be a problem. If there's something like bishop f2 um, or queen f2. It's going to be awkward to defend that pawn. So having the first move is definitely <laughs> advantageous. Um, all right, let's bring this knight out. 
A slideshow. Oh no, we don't have sound. We have sound. You don't have sound. Okay, you scared me, troll. Um. Now it's fine. I don't think anything changed. Um, I don't know. If, is anybody else here? I can't see how many viewers we have. So Twitch has a kind of bug about that. As far as like showing the amount of viewers. When you first log in and start the stream, the number doesn't show up right away. Now it's there when I refreshed it. Um, I didn't think there was audio issues, but maybe um, maybe there was. I don't know, but we look good now. Troll, you're moving a lot of pawns here. Not really characteristic of of troll to make an you know insane amount of pawn moves. I was thinking about playing d6 anyway. The structure is reminiscent of Sicilian. Um, so GB, GBRI com, it says the, yeah, you, I'm listening very well. So yeah, I don't think it was an issue on my end. I think Troll has an issue with his audio, but now it's cleared up. Um, but sometimes I forget, or sometimes the OBS actually like just clicks something and the mic doesn't work and I have to go back and reset it. But that wasn't the case here today. So, good morning, guys. I'm still half asleep. Um, we had a subscriber stream last night, which went okay. It's kind of good getting back. Um, I haven't really watched the games from the tournament I was talking about where Grisha, we looked at a game that he played. The World Rapid, apparently. There was some news somewhere I saw about Magnus Carlsen beating Fedoseyev. Or no, no, Anand. Okay, so Anand lost to Fed Anand beat Fedoseyev. Man, I'm losing it. Anand beat Fedoseyev. Okay. That may have been like the final or something. I haven't been following really. As a Sicilian player, it's, um, okay, Anand's still very dangerous. <laughs> I'm getting confused between topics here. Um, as a Sicilian player, it's very tempting to play C5, but that is my king there. I mean, I should probably be a little bit more conservative. However, I have no central pawns um, in play here. I mean, white, white could overrun me with something like c3, d4, and just have this like massive center. So I think this move is okay. Looks good. It looks like a weird closed Sicilian now. I could castle queenside. I mean, white has basically staked out a lot of space on the king side, so castling queen side might not be such a bad idea. Gabriel. All right. White did castle queen side. <clears throat> Even more reason for me to do so, probably. On the other hand, um, there is this long diagonal, you know, which looks pretty nasty. I mean, normally in the queen, in the, what am I saying? Normally in the, uh, in the Sicilian, black's attacking on the queen side, white's attacking on the king side. Um, there is no queen side and king side in chess 960, but, uh, B2 looks particularly tender. Knight a4, he simply plays c3. You know, I think we need to get our pieces developed. We can't do anything too fancy just yet. Queen g7, it's an interesting idea. But front loading with the queen is a bit weird. I um, mean, he's going to play c3 no matter what. And uh, that's going to stop my attack for, for a little while. Ideally, we'd want to rush the b pawn down the board in this kind of structure um, where white's playing like c3 in a close Sicilian but obviously my knight is not not um, not properly placed for that maneuver we do have knight a4 followed by b5 here if the knight gets attacked I'm a little bit nervous it's going to have to go back <clears throat> and most likely we should think about other things like getting our pieces developed. Um, 
Bishop e6, interesting, provoking some weaknesses, maybe. He can just stick a knight on d5, that's a problem. All right, I'm going to castle queen side. I don't think I should head to the king side with my king. So the game will remain like somewhat stable. Um, we can't unleash like vicious attacks on each other without really like weakening our, our own king position. Um, I still think that my prospects are better because I'm attacking on the side where his king is, you know. Even if it involves weakening my king position, maybe it's still possible. I'm gonna play king b8 probably and then try to creep the rest of my pieces out. The queen is the big problem. Now he's threatening d4. Well, threatening is, is one word. I mean, he can kind of overrun me with d4, like I was saying earlier. Um, this is pretty annoying. I might have to play even e6 and d5 to meet him halfway here slow it down which i didn't really want to do e6 and d5 creates a lot of weaknesses in my position which i'd rather do without but i don't see what i can do really otherwise letting him play d4 d5 feels like white's just getting all this free space so maybe i missed the boat here um no tactics nothing fancy Queen g7 doesn't help. There's queen h6, just putting my queen out in a strange position. That's not good. So I guess we're going to go with... Go with the uh, plan A. To meet d4 with d5. Not in love with it. There are certain problems here that I'm not too happy about. Uh, Bishop h4 is one of them. I guess I can play rook d7 if I have to. Um... The other problem is the bishop coming out here on this diagonal, which I'm not too excited about. You know, if my king gets caught on c8, cut off on this h2, b8 diagonal, that could be a problem as well. And now my pieces are not well coordinated. My bishop here needs to go to like f7. It's very, very awkward. So white seems to have a clear upper hand. Which has been a trend with Troll. I mean, he seems like an opening expert in chess 960 or something. Nabil put a picture of himself. How did you do that? How did you put a picture on your profile? I think I saw one other person do that. Um, I've got to figure out how to do that. Um, okay, he said it wasn't easy. <laughs> I'm not surprised. What is going on with the queen on b5, troll? Welcome to b5, my friend. Is this even a good move? Probably not. Basically just a cheap, cheap shot playing rook c7. I'm not even really threatening anything. I mean, maybe like knight e5. Do I have a threat? Knight b4? Good morning, you fed your deer. Do you get deer as far south as Serbia? Um, I think they'd have to go through Hungary to get there. Uh, okay, haven't seen any lurking around. Um, funny thing happened when I lived in Boston, actually. I'm getting off the subject, but... One day I was, like, driving home from somewhere and there was a deer in the middle of the street that was really weird all right let's get to a home base over here i guess i'll put my king on a8 if i have to that was weird being like a major metropolitan american city and having there be like a deer in the middle of the street when i drove home one day but there was a park not that far away but i didn't think they had like wild deer in the middle of the city all right, not an issue here in Budapest though. What am I doing? Back to the plan, 
man. He's going to blow me away with d4. I have to be able to play d5, but this is a problem. You know, this is not good. There had to be a better way to do this, uh, to support d5. And I'm about to lose on time to troll. This is a very, very ugly situation. Very best case scenario. Maybe I don't have to play d5. God, I don't like this. He has um, e5 or taking, depending on like which way he wants to play it. e5 just with the spatial advantage. My king is totally awkward. I wonder if I could play f5 with his bishop on g3. Despite, yeah, probably I could. I'm actually glad he closed it up. I mean, I felt like my king is not safe if uh, if it's opened up. White has an advantage in space here, but probably this is not too tragic for me. Kind of a weird move, bishop c6, but I don't feel like I can contest this file without losing it. Um, I'd rather just avoid the exchange, suck it up, and try to survive. But my position is really bad. I mean, clear disadvantage spatially. Bishop on h8 is very bad. Whoa. Okay, I'm not sure about b4. That looks, that looks wrong. He's like weakening himself. He does have rook c5, but then I can go knight a4 sometimes, knight d7, I can kick him out of there. Alright. Talking to myself, basically. Ooh, b4 is hanging for two moves? Wait a minute. Let me understand. I just was, hey, this was hanging for two moves and I didn't see it. Okay, I'm not awake yet. Good to know about that. Okay, troll. You were just dropping your pawn? Wow. I know. I could have taken the pawn for two moves. Didn't realize. Pretty bad calculation. Board vision. Now, objectively, I'm better. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, he's got too much space over here on the king side for me to be better. It's probably equal. Actually, white's tiny bit better according to Stockfish because that space is so significant. Okay, he was dropping his pawn for two moves. He played b4 and I didn't capture it because I guess I'm just not used to my queen being on f8. <laughs> I don't know, but chess 960 does strange things to you. Why did you play b4, Mr. Troll? Um, everything is under control. You have a good position. Check him out, man. This is good for white. I decided to give him a free pass there. Freaked me out with b4. I just assumed that if you played it, it must be defended. Um, because I just... <laughs> I don't know, you know. My assumption is when people, people play things... I just saw it and I had like very little time and I was afraid my bishop was going to get trapped or something and I panicked and played a6 but and once I didn't do it the first time I didn't even question b4 you know it's um you know did you ever walk down the street and notice how like it's kind of a psychological experiment if, if one person if you're around a large crowd of people you know if one person looks up in the sky like just I don't know say they're sky gazing or whatever and to look at some bird in the sky like everybody starts looking up in the sky you know um, it's kind of like that it seems like if one person does it then then it must be something there you know so if he can play b4 um, I just trust him and it must be defended or something but truly you played a really good game um, the opening seemed kind of okay for me but I guess not 
this is deceptive, you know? I mean, if you go through the first couple of moves, it looks like everything's fine. You know, I'm playing some kind of Sicilian. I have good control of D4. It's just like, wow, you know? But if you look at the engine's evaluation, check it out. It's like plus 0.8 here for white. I think this is, this queen on F8, you know, is really, really questionable. His opening moves, let's see the opening here. F4 is like the fourth most popular move for white. Um, G4 is actually best move according to the engine, not commonly. Well, that's 84 games as well. So, and check it out. So I played G6, and now he played G4, which is the engine's second favorite move. And it is the third most popular of the few games that have been played. Now it's the number one by the engine. But, you know, if you're used to playing normal chess, I'm not sure if you would pull the trigger on g4, but it makes sense. The rook is active, the bishop's active. White had a pretty big advantage right out of the gate after like six moves. He's almost a pawn up here. I wonder if I even made a mistake by castling queenside. Well, I mean, knight c6 seems forced, but okay, let's see. So I castled queenside. The computer wants to stop e5, um, stop d4 at all cost by playing e5 in this position interesting all right guys tough game man you were better um i'm gonna take the subscribers challenges first so i'll play with aldisto and when we run out of subscribers i'll take the rest of the challenges um nice opening as usual troll so aldisto haven't seen you in a while um i guess everybody's busy with the holiday season if you are here in Hungary, the United States, um, not all countries have holidays now, obviously. Someone was complaining about um, about the Thursday. About, I wanted to play the English app. Actually, can I take that back? I wanted to play 1C4, but um, can I do a take back? Anyways, uh, someone was complaining about the marathon being on Thursday. I think a guy from Turkey you know, he started a forum post about it. And I agree, you know, it's really weird to have the chess marathon on a Thursday. I mean, that just doesn't make a lot of sense, you know. But the problem was, I guess, there's just massive holidays on the weekend. I mean, I know that not every country celebrates Christmas, but still, there are a lot of holidays, not only Christmas, around this time. So it makes it awkward, but still, I wouldn't have the marathon on a Thursday. Um, that was kind of weird. The late middle game. So Aldisto started playing this F5 idea, you know. I could give a lecture on this. I tried to do this with White 30-some years ago. 30 years ago, basically, I was playing Aldisto set up with White experimentally. And my friend made fun of it. He said F4 was stupid. Um, but there was actually this footnote in the Encyclopedia of Chess Openings. It's a reverse um, floor Mickiness English, what Alisto is doing here, basically. And uh, there's some really, really good games with uh, with Aronian and and Vacher Legrave and other other players. But those guys are like the showcase. We've had a number of games with Aldisto already in this variation. I don't have much faith in White's advantage here. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It just doesn't seem fair. The first time that Zoltan Medvedev played this move against me was back in like 2005, probably. Um, I was kind of floored, you know. I had never ever seen it. Um, of course, I considered that idea with White. 25 years earlier or 30 20 years earlier but you know i was like an amateur and i just wasn't that strong you know um but when medvedev played this against me i was kind of like wow can you do that that doesn't seem right you know it seems like you're blasting away in the center and white should be better here anyway i'm wasting all my time talking about this so we've had a number of battles with aldisto in this structure 
Aronian has defended a lot of games on the white side. I don't know why I'm saying defended, but played a lot of games on the white side of these types of positions. Not only against Bashir Legrave, but also against some other good players. Like, um, it was uh, Caruana he won a fantastic game against, but in the traditional lines, like, it's pretty well known. Knight f6 is pretty well known. That's where he beat Caruana in a really nice game once. But f5, it's, uh, it doesn't seem like even fair, you know, that that move should be good. We're basically keeping the tension, keeping the tension. Maybe looking for f3, but, you know, that kind of break is double-edged. probably essential though I think these positions are hard for me to play because it's you know playing the English is usually like uh, playing the Sicilian in reverse but this variation is more like playing the French in reverse and uh, and I don't really play the French it's one of the openings I played the least with black I beat Vola Keaton's dad which doesn't really mean too much the guy's like 2100 or something maybe lower 2050 what are my only french wins a6 but i can say i beat Volokitin. keaton um knight takes c6 is tempting taking on c5 and maybe we play for doesn't seem right to take on c5, though. Let's wait a little bit longer. Now he's forcing my hand. Bishop b2. Too late for bishop b2, huh? I guess I'm going to have to take here or play f4. But f4 is ugly. We don't want to do that. Oh, it's okay. His king's still in the center. Um, maybe he'll take with the d pawn. Opening up his bishop on c8. Do I have anything here? Maybe not. Yeah, this absolutely feels right for black and the queen is pretty well placed there <clears throat> now one would assume that my idea was to put the bishop on the long diagonal here is there another possibility well there is this weird idea of bishop a3 It's a French, like, it's my bad bishop. So, maybe it makes sense. Chess Quack said, I beat a chess master by the name of Robert J. Fisher. Robert J. Fisher's been around forever, Chess Quack. Um, as long as I've been playing in tournaments, that guy was, like, one of the more active players. He was at, like, every major tournament. I mean, I don't think he's been a master for years. Was he, um, this isn't a new one, right? The, there's a guy, I mean, for the most part, he was usually around 2100. Possible that he reached 2200 at one point. But he was usually, like, in around the 2100s. He played tons of tournaments. I wonder if he was, like, literally named for Bobby J. Fisher. I never, like, actually played the guy, um... I don't think that Aldisto really thought this through all the way. Now I get to keep a very powerful dark squared bishop, you know? I have bishop d6. Does it actually do anything? No. This is better. This was my plan. 
stick with the plan, especially when you don't have time. I think a bad decision by Aldis, though. Though his position isn't lost, um, I think on a practical level, he did the wrong thing. <clears throat> There's really no reason he had to give up such a powerful piece. Now the issue for me is maybe like there are no breaks. So see what I can do with uh, the little that I've got here. Don't have much, but maybe a little something. Queen b6. Keeping an eye on this pawn could discoordinate him. Trying to overload his queen, basically. I have bishop takes f6 at some point. But there's very little else I can do. I have f3 is nothing. Um, no other pawn breaks. Maybe pushing this pawn up here to like a5 or something to be a future threat. But I'm very fortunate to have any advantage. Um, Safarli, right. He is Azeri, right? But that's not an easy name to remember. So I can be excused for forgetting it. Kind of a weird name. Uh, yeah. All right, we're on the dark squares. We've got the file. But Aldiso is a tough customer. He has a really credible score. 33% against me. I mean, considering his rating is now really low. Took back with the bishop. Um, I could have just taken the pawn there, huh? I guess it's not going anywhere. He has other problems now. I was saying there were no pawn breaks, but potentially I could play h4, h5. Things are starting to creak. I'm not sure I really want to do that, to be perfectly honest. But let's just keep the option open to play h4, h5. His queen is nearly trapped in some lines, like here. We have bishop e4. Did he have knight e7 there? I think now it's lost. Second pawn. Obviously this is very tough for black. Too many weaknesses. We might as well just trade. Now just try to convert this endgame two pawns up. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy to just trade pieces. Yeah, good move.
pretty easy to read read the mind now I'm gonna to get to the H file first he should have jumped on that opportunity to get over there first take take everything <laughs> all that we can get here maybe I should just check and take the a5 pawn I'm threatening Bishop g4 this way I guess Overkill. Um, all right, man. Interesting opening. No spamming allowed. Nice name. All right. So, what do we got here? Gustafsson, one game. Oddly enough, um, yeah, pretty much everyone, including Ironian, plays d5. But it goes into an endgame pretty much by force. Um, and I don't really like trading pieces, so... I've been using this knight e5. <clears throat> Let's see. It looks like bishop d6 has been played here a couple of games. Boomman, 2015. You know, this is a good point. If white has to play f4, um, that would really, really change the position. I'll have to take a look at this later. Okay, Santa Claus. I lost um, Nabil. He had to go for an hour. Okay, Nabil, if he comes back, we'll play him. Um, So I'm going to play Santa Claus and Unicorns. And we'll see you later, Nabil. And um, if he does show up, we'll give him a, a chance to play because he was here. All right. So dear Santa Claus, I'm going to try something different. Hold on for a second. I just want to spot you a little time advantage there, but it is six plus three. Um, I haven't gotten to play too many of these Scandinavians with knight f6. This is kind of a professional safe move. Knight f3 and uh, well, you can play queen takes d5 transferring to a normal Scandinavian here if you want to. Um, you got timed out because of the numbers in your name or something? I wonder if that's possible. D4, G6. All right. Anyway, guys, welcome. No simul stream this, <laughs> this weekend because it's Sunday, is New Year's Eve. I have great plans for very exciting things. Um, all right, Unicorn's troll and roll is re-challenging me. I don't know about that troll. I've had enough of you today. You could do like knight b4 here? No. <laughs> okay. Um, no. We're pretty much forced to play knight to b4. Speaking of Grishuk, he played a4 against me years ago in a game that's actually on YouTube. That's an idea that you can use in the Alakine's defense. A very early a4. Um, bishop e2 looks kind of quiet. 
the best move for white is, well, besides Grishuk's a4, um, which is interesting, the knight c3 is the main line. You can also play h3, probably, preventing bishop g4. But Santa Claus is, okay, Santa Claus's setup isn't bad. It's just kind of like routine. Um, not trying to like punish black or blow black off the board. In the knight c3 variations, you can play very sharply castling queen side. Here, Blight White's basically committed to a pretty modest type of setup. I think that White still has a small edge, you know, even with this quiet type of setup. Making it in the morning on Sunday. Um, why don't I make it in the morning? I have, I have to do something babysitting or something like that a morning on Sundays is not easy Bishop e3 um, right he's delayed this night a long time you know this diagonal looks man is there anything I could do like e5 well I have to do e5 I mean there is no other move the fact that this is unprotected you know could give me like an e4 quick so I started playing this opening, I don't know when, probably when I became a master, around the time when I became a master. I've been playing it for quite a while, but I basically stopped playing this opening in, in long games because it's just not really a good surprise weapon anymore. Who can play in the morning anyway? Um, well, I am playing in the morning, right? Um, yeah, we're not talking about New Year's Day. We're talking about New Year's Eve morning. But like, you know, <laughs> troll, yeah, it's different. I mean, the evening streams, I get more players because I can draw from um, both American-based players and uh, and European-based players. So for something like a simul, I prefer to do it in the evening, our time, European time. So I'm looking at E4 here. But I think that's probably too, too fantastic. But wait, let's let's think about it now. Okay, nothing crazy like e4 pawn takes knight, bishop takes b2. Maybe e4 pawn takes knight, pawn takes f3. But there's actually a problem there. e4 pawn takes knight, pawn takes f3. He just recaptures. On f3, he can leave like b2 hanging, it looks like. Um, anyways, I mean, I don't have to refute this. I mean, I can play probably not knight a5 because knight bd2 is a comfortable answer. I probably have to retreat back to e7 in this, in this version, but it's fine. I've played this type of position like a hundred million times. Um, after knight c3, we just transpose to a position that I've played a considerable amount of games in. But I just want—I want to look after the game to see if there's something better than than playing knight e7. Weight setup isn't too dangerous. I haven't played I haven't played this very much recently, but Black should have quite a few resources. It's very similar to the King's Indian. Um, also Alakine's defense. Knight on B six. Sometimes these pawns are advancing. Yeah, I guess drawing a parallel to like some variations of the Alakine's defense is probably best. There's a lot of relation between believe it or not, the Alakine's defense and the Scandinavian. I feel like they're in the same family. Obviously the knight maneuver, knight takes d5, knight b6, I mean, this is a lot of similarity right there. Don't do a simul. <laughs> uh, next Sunday I'll do a simul. I have to check the schedule. I think it's free though, you know, I don't even have a team game that week. So, 
Next Sunday, I will do a Simon like a good one with a long time control, like at least 40 40. All right, what's up, Santa Claus? Yeah. Here, Black has two moves. I think I've probably played Knight d6, but I also like Rook e8. I wonder if 96 is in a bit more dynamic. We could even sack the exchange in some positions. <clears throat> Have to be careful of certain pawn forks. I think in the past I had probably played rookie eight. In, in blitz games because that's the only the only testing ground where I've actually played this position most pros wouldn't play bishop e2 I faced bishop e3 against uh, one Ukrainian IM once where I was very very fortunate to win with black um, that's really a main variation if you go to this position Knight c3 and bishop e3 is the main line. There's even like new in chess yearbook articles about that position, believe it or not. So. It's, it's kind of dynamic for black. We have a lot of attacking potential on the king side. f5, e4, bishop takes h3. If we drive, drive the knight away from e, from f3, we have the queen coming out down this diagonal. It's pretty dangerous. Here I'm thinking about sacking an exchange, though. I almost think it's like... close to forced. Do I have e4, I guess? I was wondering if he plays bishop a3, if I sack the exchange with knight takes c4. Probably a good positional exchange sack. Um, okay, this is not a bad move. Maybe we can try to blockade now. The exchange sacrifice ideas kind of go out the window. Um, even c6 is possible. That looks kind of weird, though. f5... The problem is he moves his bishop in and he's threatening c5. I have to deal with this somehow. It's not that easy to deal with. Bishop h6. Nah, there's no time. If I try to play queen g5, he always has like knight e4 all the time. Um, I was thinking knight d7. Knight d7 and b6, it's pretty ugly. And he's avalanching on the king side with b4, a5. a5, bishop a3, and the problems remain. So I think I have to bail out here. At the end of the day, maybe rook e8 is just a better move than knight d6. I should leave the knight on f5. and um, Because if I end up having to move it again because of the threat of c5, it feels like I, I wasted time. Okay, this is not really an issue, I think. I can play it even f5 here blocking some of my pieces, but I mean, the square is too important. I can't let him have the e4 square. But I think that that... It's bordering on too passive for white now. Kind of moving back and forth. Um, I guess we just go... Go. 
But what am I going to do when he goes back to e3? <sighs> now my rook should be on f8. Okay, I don't know what to do now. Yeah, that's a good move. Threatening c5. I can only hold it up temporarily. Maybe I have some a5. b4, a5 might save me. But no a5 here. So I want to sack the exchange. Now before a5 would be an idea. Santa Claus is playing very, very positional style chess here. Okay, well, the smoke's cleared a little bit. He let me play a4. If he plays b3, it's it's a little bit slow. Yeah, he's just melting now. Santa Claus is melting down. Kind of like the last game. He played tough, but chess is not easy. Um, queen b4 ideas. Bishop's not doing too much on b7, is it? As long as we get the queens off, we're good to go. I could, well, nearly trap his, uh, nearly trap his knight there. He's worried about that. All right, I guess I just ignore this. Tricky. But now it's lost. He can hang on for a little while here, but objectively. Mm, that's kind of annoying. Bishop D1 though, doesn't work. He has to blockade from, from D1, B1. All right, <clears throat> let's see the analysis board in the opening. I mean, opening explorer here. You know, so this is quiet, bishop e2. It's okay, but it's more aggressive to try to castle long. So, I was interested in this position. You know, after knight c3, knight f5. Um, do I have any games here? Sergei Smagin. Um, Maybe bishop c5 isn't as strong as bishop g5. Everybody played rook e8, so I think my knight d6 is a mistake. I realized, you know, later. I mean, I know I played. I know I've played rook e8 before, but I think I had a student or someone who played knight d6, and I thought, okay, it's interesting. But there's just too many problems with the pawns forking me on c5. So we have to play rook e8. I haven't played this in a while. Rook e8, knight e4, or knight d2. Um, Nadanian. Throstor Thorhalson is one of the early explorers of this uh, opening. 
So, all right, guys, that's not a position you encounter too often. Um, I'm going to play NM Unicorns, and then we'll go back to subscriber um, challenges. I take back. We'll give Unicorns a game here, NM Unicorns. We'll take our subscriber challenge with I take back. I had the feeling, I don't know why, I wanted to play the English opening today. And um, I didn't do it against Aldous, though. I played knight f3 on move one. Okay, in so many cases, black plays an Indian-style defense, and we can't play the English opening anyway. I really, um, I love to play, like, uh, reverse Sicilian-type positions, but it's so rare that people let you. It just seems like when you play c4, 90% of your opponents play, like, knight f6, and the other 10% play maybe c5. And very few players actually play c4, e5, which I think is the most interesting. Anybody who's a King's Indian player is going to do it like Unicorns does here and play, you know, just g6. Okay, he can play a delayed e5 and go into a kind of closed Sicilian. He can also play a symmetrical English. But, um, what to do now? Okay, let's try something interesting. One of my students has been, like, insisting on this move. Um, been working with him for, like, a year. And, uh, and he really likes playing rook b1. I'm not sure how much independent significance it has, if it's even a good move or not, but um, we'll see. Maybe it's not bad. This will transpose, most likely, to some kind of somewhat normal line. The question is, should I play knight f3 or should I play like e3? e3 feels wrong here somehow. Um, maybe I should just play knight f3. Not really sure. But the rook b1 is not something I'm really accustomed to. I thought we'd try it here. This most likely, most likely will transpose to some kind of normal variation by a slightly unusual order of moves. It seems like it should be a normal line. Um, black has other ways to play besides knight c6, probably, too. I think that my student that I was talking about has had games pretty much like this, exactly. And obviously black can exchange on f3. There's also the possibility of bringing the knight back to to e6 or even f5. Unicorn is playing fast and practically. This is a pretty standard type of setup though. I had a similar game last week in my tournament. Played in a closed tournament. For those of you that don't know, I got hammered like minus four. Maybe my worst tournament in, I don't know, <laughs> like the last 10 years. But um, in a close, another closed English, my opponent did something similar. He put his knight on f5. I mean, knight f5, you've got to admit that seems like kind of a strange place for the knight in the fact that, you know, in the sense that it blocks the bishop on c8, and it's not clear what its path really is, you know. He's not threatening e4, right? I mean, if I play d4, he's thrilled. Like, oh, I've got an open e-file for my rook on e8. Great, you know. Um, but if I don't play d4, if I do something else, if I play d3, you know, then could he play e4? Would it make sense? I mean, I think the Unicorns is only 
pseudo plan would be some kind of maniacal H pawn shove here, you know. Um, but what? Why? What am I doing? I don't really have a plan either. That's the problem. D four is not good. I'm not sure about D three. I'm not sure. It's, you know, it reminds me of playing the dragon with black. He did play h5. I'm not sure there's any real threats, but it's an active looking move. Um, maybe now e4. As I said, I don't think he has any other real plans other than pushing the H pawn. Um, now we're both in a closed English where our knights are on the wrong square on F6. Usually the, the breaks with the F pawns are essential in this type of structure and both sides are not supposed to have knights on F3 or f6, they're supposed to be on like e7 or somewhere where it allows your f-pawn free movement. In my game though, the knight was on e2, not on f3. Very similar position the other day, playing an under 2300 event in Vegas. But your knight was where? On e2? But you're talking about an each pawn push for you or for your opponent. I feel like you don't have a lot of other plans besides h5, to be honest. Um, not that I have a lot of plans. No, I'd love to play for f4. You could also just play d4 here. So bishop g4 might be a problem in that case. Okay, it's a complicated position. I, I don't know, you know. I'm going to have a hard time playing f4, but he's going to have a hard time playing f5. Now that he's played h5, I mean, that's a lot of pawn moves around his king side. What's he going to do, like knight h7, f5? This pawn will become kind of questionable. He can play f5 maybe, but how does he recapture on f5? Say knight h7, his rook's also on the wrong square for f5. Complicated closed structure, typical for the closed English, closed Sicilian. I don't know. Um, you could have played knight d4, man. I mean, to be honest with you. I think that this this is possible, although the the change in the structure, I'm not sure. You could get like a knight on c5 maybe. He did that move anyway. It's a good idea. Um, yeah. All right. So now, what do you want to do, kids? Well, I need to develop my pieces. My pieces. without using all my time, preferably. I'm, I'm thinking about playing for f4, but am I on the wrong track here? Okay. Let's um, probe, probe the position a little bit. Inducing weaknesses, hopefully. Is it a weakness or is it just a waste of time? I don't know. I don't like the, my, my knight is um, hanging in some lines on c3. If things open up, I want to keep that guy protected. 
So I was thinking like queen d2. But I'm not sure that's the best square for the queen. Maybe c2. Pretty, pretty hard for both sides here. Um, I guess white feels a little bit stronger than black in this position. <clears throat> Somebody, yeah, Chess Quack was talking about 92. Um, I didn't want to do that because it's kind of inherently passive. But it's definitely an idea. Um, you know, now I could even consider d4 transferring to what is more like a king's Indian. We also have c5 even. That looks a bit over the top. Um, but what's the plan here? 96, he wants to play 96. Queen b3. So f5, I'm wasting too much time. I'm trying to play too perfectly. Okay, telegraphing my intentions. Um, we have kingside play. Like in a normal botphinic English, f4, maybe even g4. Perhaps... I was looking at tons of moves. Queen b3, c5, d4. He just played f5. All right, I'm probably gonna regret this, but this is one way to defend my knight on c3. Try to play f4. You know, he might have even h4 at some point. But first he has to think about his king. I wish we had more time. I talk about this all the time though. Closed positions, particularly closed Sicilian type of things, you know, like this where all the pieces are on the board, all the pawns are on the board. It's not enough like seven minutes plus three seconds to play a decent game. You need more time. I mean, there is a lot going on in the game. You know, it's one thing if there's like a lot of exchanges, it's a technical position, but but it's now we have to play like a one minute game with three second increment with, uh, with all the pieces on the board. It's an increment bullet game from this position. Someone talked about knight h4. Knight h4 was interesting. But it's also exposed. Um, you could get attacked by bishop f6 or g5 in some situations, so it's quite double-edged. I mean, I think we have to be faithful to the plan here. But his rook might end up being well-placed. I'm a little concerned about that. All right. Maybe bringing my knight back into the game, not a bad idea. Yeah, I was never in love with knight h2, um, to be honest with you guys, but... Okay, now he has, um, he has a weird move like bishop h6. Looks like he's going to try to target my f-pawn. I didn't really expect him to leave, to give up the center there. I've got to take with a pawn. He's gone for my F pawn, but I can simply protect. Okay. 
Is there anything else? Tactics with knight h4. Complicated. Okay, I can protect this a third time if necessary with a rook on f1. So it looks like we've got just a hanging pawn position where my development is a little bit better. My king feels a little safer than black's king. Um, I even have f5, don't I? Okay, this was an impulsive move. Basically sacking a pawn, but his king is wide open. Yeah, that's a funny move. All right. What the heck is going on? Well, I'm not sure what's going on. His knight is short of squares. Probably missed a stronger move here at some point. Please don't let there be any tactics. Please, no tactics. Okay, tough game. I don't know. I mean, until we got into bullet chess here, it seemed like it was pretty much a close game. I don't know where we left theory. Um, looks like I did the right. I did the right thing. So there's a couple games up to this point where everybody played d3. Um, this is a new move, e3. And now you're supposed to exchange here. I guess this is just good for you. You just exchange on f3 and play e4. That's weird. For some reason, I didn't seriously consider this. You can just take and play e4. That looks like it just equalizes at least. So, I'm supposed to play d3, and then you play bishop g4. And it's a slightly different game. It just looks pretty equal. Okay, um, let's go back to this challenge against I take back. I don't know where to get play. I mean, yeah, it seems like the way the game went, you were slightly worse, Chess Quack. But after that, like, you would I, you would have been great. Um, I would have had absolutely, maybe even slightly worse if, if you play just knight takes knight. And I didn't like knight f5. Yeah, you keep the pieces on the board, but it's it's kind of weird. Um, all right. So, c4, we get to play e5, which is cool. Um, my friend Zoltan Medvej played in the A group at the tournament I just played in, and Indic, this really talented Serbian GM, 
played h5 against him. I was just going over this yesterday with another one of my students. Um, g3 h5 is a hyper aggressive idea. Medvedev played h4, but I'm not sure that's the best move for white. Anyways. Well, I mean, very likely we'll play like a reverse Sicilian here. I think the way the chess quack played the game was fine, but you know, just just the question about knight f5. Also possible is knight e6 instead of knight f5 chess quack, which is interesting, you know, to try to put the knight on like c5 or something. But in general, I think you're black and you have less space. Um, it actually makes sense to do what the computer said, because trading pieces is uh, is normal when you have less space, right? Although aggressive players don't like to trade pieces with black, um, sometimes it's objectively the best move. Usually it's objectively the best move, <laughs> but keeping the pieces on, you know, is a way to beat like weaker players for sure. So this could be similar to the last game, but it's not quite the same, obviously. I guess I'll play, you know, again, you can play rook b1 in this position too, as a kind of waiting move. I've played e3. Um, I don't like playing e4 because of knight c6. Goes straight into like a mainline Botvinnik system. I don't know. Rook b1 is also interesting here. I don't think the English opening really gives white a chance for a serious opening advantage, but you have to learn to play with positions that are equal um, with chances for both sides. I think um, But that was a definite inaccuracy by me. I didn't even consider knight takes f3, queen takes f3, e4 for black, assuming like you would be overextended. But you can just protect it, you know? So that was seriously, seriously a mistake. Okay, now this is basically like, I take back is playing uh, King's Indian attack, or it could also be a, a variation of the closed Sicilian. I actually had, um, well, I had the same game with black having a knight on e7 last week. This is a closed Sicilian now, not a King's Indian attack. If black were to play, it would be, you know, if black were to play like c6, I would classify the opening differently and say black was playing a king's indian attack with white with knight c6 it turns into a reverse closed sicilian bishop d7 not like an ambitious move it looks like something spassky would play um in his later years but uh but it's certainly playable you know not not ambitious but Now he can do like queen c8. Maybe I should consider rook e1, bishop h3, bishop h1 in that kind of position. Yeah, this is the right idea. You know, rook b8, probably. I mean, it's still possible to do something like queen c8 to give the knight the retreat square, d8. But I have seen a pawns fall off in this kind of position. Um, after black goes like, actually, I don't know how I'm going to make that a pawn fall off. Um, I can't really go queen a4 after b5 because he has the bishop on d7. He can play like a6. So it's not so easy to win his a pawn. Knight e7, b5. We might see another knight f5 type maneuver, though that, again, feels like it, it's wrong. Mm. 
But my point is I don't think I'm threatening this because he has a6 all the time there. So I have to find a different plan. You know, you could do uh, h5 on the chess quack. But it's questionable whether black's attack is really materializing that fast as it needs to. C6 may be a serious positional mistake. I mean, it is possible to play... No, queen a4 is kind of weird. Um, all right, we're going to go with a natural move. And uh, this is like... This formation is basically the, the favorite of the young Yasser Sarawan. I remember when I was a kid, I mean, Yasser was still pretty young. He had a lot of games that he played against world-class players um, with these Englishes, you know, with e3 and knight e2 and, and knight c3. Um, Sarawan is like probably one of the world's leading experts in uh, closed English type positions with white, with this type of formation. But bishop a3 makes a lot of sense. We would be doing the same thing with black if this were a closed Sicilian. This this last move, c6, creates a, a lot of problems here. e7, d6, they're all vulnerable. Um, but now what? You know, how can I increase the pressure? It's not so easy. Queen c7 is a bit artificial looking. Wow. Straight out of my tournament game from last week. All right, I guess we'll make this exchange. Um, we can trade rooks, take the b-file, and uh, I've got squares for my queen at a5. I didn't anticipate this. Maybe I shouldn't have underestimated this move. I have knight b5 for whatever that's worth. I mean, I think the bishop takes c6 is kind of a positional mistake on one hand. Maybe I can just not do anything and um, just focus on... the d5 square, you know? Queen b3, for example, just uh, walking into knight d7, is that going to be an issue? Is it better to go here in this position? This is the move that got me in trouble <laughs> in my last tournament game. All right, so queen b4. Good move or bad move? Accurate or inaccurate? Queen b4 was my blunder in my last tournament game. I, I put the queen on b4 in the same structure where I should have put it on b3, but it was a much different situation. <laughs> there was tactics and pawn tension in the center, and I blundered queen b4, luckily not losing. Um, anyway, guys, welcome to my stream. Our next stream is probably Monday. Um, we'll be streaming Monday morning, same thing, 10 a.m. I'm hoping. You know, but I'm not going to make guarantees because it is New Year's Eve morning. Um, not New Year's Eve morning, New Year's Day morning. So there's a small chance that I'll have a massive hangover or something like that. But I don't know how the turnout will be on New Year's Eve morning. Maybe I'm making a big mistake even thinking about streaming at that time. All right. If not Monday, then definitely Tuesday night. I'm doing a blitz, a blitz stream uh, with a viewer tournament here on eChess. But anyway, I, I wish you guys a happy New Year. Um, all right, our bishop becomes kind of bad, but our space advantage is maybe outweighing that, and also the open file here. But I take back defending this pretty, pretty solidly. 
He's going to play knight b6 at some point. Yeah, but now... And the A pawn is loose. I'm not sure how much that really matters. Passive move by black. Um, but what do you want him to do, you know? Not sure what to do here. My advantage is just very, very small. This seems like a strange plan, bishop b4, bishop d2. But I was concerned about bishop h6, and I want to play e4. And now we're going back. We don't have too much here. Wow. His bishop b6, that was a brilliant maneuver. Almost lost on time. How strong is this guy? Floor. Think Floor Bodvinik. My God. Amazingly tough. <sighs> There's probably no way for me to make progress here. Probably just a draw. I could play like a3. Um, he could even play f5 actually. That's kind of risky for black though so we might as well play g4 we're gonna put one pawn on the wrong color we might as well put them all on the wrong color there's just no way to make progress That's an impressive game. Um, I don't know. We were better, but never winning uh, in this game. Let's check out the analysis board. It says black's better, you have f5, wow. That definitely escaped me. <laughs> f5, oh my god. Maybe it was a mistake to trade pawns on the queen side because that's almost like an insurance policy for me, that pawn over there. Probably I shouldn't do that. 
in case he gets carried away and does some crazy stuff, um, I'll have an A pawn and I can walk up and eat his pawns or something. But apparently he has F5. So maybe even G4 is... Wow, it says he's clearly better here. I didn't think it was that bad. I shouldn't play H5, apparently. Really nice game by I Take Back. I was better, but never winning. You know, and the end game was totally okay for Black. I was better early here in this. In this middle game, I have a huge positional advantage, I thought. But, you know, how to make progress. This is where I couldn't find a way to, to really make progress. My concern was that if I played e4, black has bishop h6, and I guess I underestimated my position here. I mean, I thought I'm just losing control of the open file, you know? So, if he challenges me, let's say here, rook takes. The problem is it's hard. Can he, can he capture with the rook and lose his a7 pawn? His take with the knight. And he doesn't actually win control of the file. I was concerned about bishop h6, you know, so. All right, man, good game. Um, hey, Spinal Tap, what's up, man? Were you doing the, the marathon? You're like my neck, my back. Uh, sitting in the chair for like 24 hours playing playing Blitz or something? Is that the problem? Um, Bondareski Botvinnik, 1941, four pawns in the center for black. Is that what I wanted to say? Uh, not exactly. You got the classics down though, Nefidov. Yesterday it was Geller. Today it's Bondarevsky and Bodvinik. I like that. Um, troll on a roll, we already played. He's trying to sneak in another game. If we're really desperate troll, um, I'm gonna play Nefidov here, our classical go-to guy for classical Soviet chess. Um, no, today's the theme is the English opening. So Spinal Tap Chess, how did you finish in the Blitz Marathon, buddy? Did you make the top 10? Or did you get knocked out due to back pain, back spasms? Getting old, man. Nefidov may not be here. Um, Bondarevsky Bafanik sounds like a Soviet championship. All right. 1941, I think I might even have that. I might even have a book that was published of all the games from that tournament. There was a game where Bafinik beat Bondarevsky with white in a French, man. Um, a very, very good game. I think it was Bondarevsky, but sometimes I get him confused with Boleslavsky. The names are just too similar. Um, symmetrical English. Don't know, I didn't check. It's like you play in a tournament for 24 hours. Wouldn't you bother to check how you did? Um, no, it's not important. I'm just doing it for the practice. I had nothing better. Throwing back a few beers. Um, I didn't care what my score was. I'm basically playing the same formation every single game, which is kind of weird. So let's try something different here. Um, I like a3. I did that recently against Nefidov in one game. E3 is like drawish. Of course, we can always play B3. I like B3. Don't try this at home. No, I don't, I don't think you barely defended. Take back. I think you did a good job. Definitely outside the box type of play. With bishop takes C6, you, you, you turned the corner there with a kind of marginal anti-positional recapture but you probably saved yourself in a way because if it just kept going the way it was going i was gonna like take the b file and take over the game um so that was interesting you know take with the bishop and and take my knight on d5 maybe i even shouldn't put the knight on d5 right away i don't know okay now how would i play this if i were if i were black that's what I've got to ask myself here. 
I'm pretending. I mean, you're gonna copycat, really? Man, that's so lame. God. How can you copycat? Oh my god. Now what do I do? I know what I could do. But it's not, it's a little bit too much. What if we go for it, man? I'm, I'm tired of the copycat business, you know? I'm, I'm really, really tired of this copycat stuff. Uh, we're gonna just chop it off and, uh, play like I'm black, I guess. You know, if you want to win, you have to take risks. That's something that I don't do enough. Um, I realized last night I had a kind of epiphany when I couldn't sleep at around six o'clock in the morning. For some reason, I just couldn't sleep. And I started thinking about chess for some reason. And I had this sudden idea that, not sudden because someone told this to me the other day, but I'm trying to play like in a way that's very correct. But the problem is that people, everybody knows what I'm trying to do. You know, I never bluff and I never take weird risks and I never try to complicate intentionally. And um, I think that's why I'm not gaining rating points because my game is very face up. Um, when I play weak players, I can just beat them. It doesn't matter. I'm very good at like beating 2100, 2200 type of players. But when I play players that are a little stronger, um, I think my game is a little too, a little too straightforward and people just know what I'm doing. Um, so maybe, maybe I have to make a conscious effort to, to start to intentionally play for complications. I was talking about this with Nicola Sedlak last week, you know, we were talking about another player, Grandmaster Seba Attila and, uh, we're kind of joking about him because sometimes you look at his games and you're kind of like, you know, it looks like absolutely random. I mean, what the guy's doing, but we both decided that it's not random. It's, it's almost like a very weird kind of, uh, you know, intentional gambling and practical play dominating. All right. Queen D six. Problem is if I play knight f3, you have bishop g4. Maybe there I could play like knight g5. Okay, let's just play chess. Another thing I need to do more. Just play chess, not try to play the perfect move. Structure is everything. Soviet Championship 1941. I came to beat you. No, I just came to I came to play better than I usually play. Um I'm usually playing too, uh, too straightforward and we need to, um, start to integrate this into my game to try to create more imbalance, um, be more tricky probably. Yeah. Bishop G4 is what I expected. I could certainly let him take, it wouldn't be the end of the world if I castled queenside here, but my plan and my gut instinct told me to go here. Larson played like this with black in, um, in Englishes. He probably did this with white too. Um, probably I should go back to, to the Bent Larson books I have and find some players who, who played like more, you know, weird, creative, and, uh, not so ABC style like I've been playing. Creating imbalances, um, is probably the the most important thing in in beating like anybody i mean we can beat weak players with just technique but i'm doing that too much um i need to create imbalance more when well, nephew started getting serious i mean he drew me last game and beat me the game before that so i don't know Obviously, I'm taking him too lightly. 
It's tough for us ABC guys. I agree. Probably Spinal Tap Chess is, is lazy like myself and plays a little too ABC. But he's good at it, you know, and it's like a kind of crutch. If you can just like beat people with technique, um, then you kind of like don't tap into your inner creativity. You know, you just kind of leave it in the back, in the closet, you know, locked away somewhere. Um, and that's, uh, that's going to limit you. I can't remember the last time I beat a strong GM. I mean, it's been a while. I almost beat Sedlac, but I managed to... I managed to throw it away. Um, close, though. I got close. The only player who almost beat him in this tournament, and uh, the only strong, really strong player in the tournament. But it just wasn't quite, quite up to speed yet. So... Mr. Nefidov. Now the questions start to arise about how to continue here. Kind of like F4. But it's double-edged. I'm, um... You know... I am a player who plays or has played the Jinji Indian. I play this type of bishop takes c3 with black. So. I can trade queens. The problem is that I'd prefer to do so on my terms. You know, castle and queenside, not a good idea here. Still nephew of... He's playing extremely good lately. Seems like he, uh, I don't know, he started trying harder lately or something. I don't know how else to really explain it. Seems like Nefidov has upped his game um, in the last couple of games. Oh, the last game he was in trouble when he offered a draw. I had four seconds left. He played well before that. Yesterday, we had a good game. Well, why don't I just play like knight f2? Objectively, black is okay here, but I think the thing is that um, it's easier for white to play than it is for black. Like, it's it's easier for black to do something wrong um, with that bishop. Pretty good, but, you know, it also has some issues. But I think he's still equal here. You, know, you might argue that queen takes c3 is a, is a concession of a type. Um, I'm not sure if it's really bad. Deadlocked here. Very close game. I like the way that black has played pretty much. But the knight, another interesting move. I'm afraid I'm going to have to do this. I didn't really want to do this. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to. Nefidov absolutely playing great. 
the last couple of games. If I played e5 there, he could play f6. Is he threatening, like, to play h4? Maybe I should consider playing h4 myself. Nefidov's rating is ridiculous. Like, why are you 1753, man? I mean, this this is impossible. Um, all right. I think he was... He is still probably close to equal, though maybe now rook d4. Maybe rook d4 starts to lose the thread. He should have played e5. If he had played like e5 when I played king e2, um, I think pretty much anything could have happened here in this game. But now he's like melting down. I think he was fully okay, you know, until until that point. When I played king e2, yeah, here the engine thinks you're slightly better after a5, a3, rook e8, e4, bishop c8, king e2. I really thought that e5 was necessary here. The, the engine likes your h5. Okay, h5, fine. I don't have a problem with h5. Now e5, probably. Maybe it's not enough, you know, for black to be better, but this is a situation where I think Stockfish, again, like the older engines, is overvaluing the bishop. You know, it says black's equal here. But this is the way that, like, Fritz 7 lost to, uh, lost to, um, you know, German grandmasters back in, like, 2005, you know? I mean overvaluing this piece is this bishop really as good as this knight you know i'm not so sure the fact that the computer says that black is equal here is it really equal um i'm not sure you know so this may be a case of overvaluing the bishop but anyway nefidov good game man um i'm gonna take this challenge from nice sob next I came to beat you. <laughs> uh, we have to be creative. But Nefidov played great, you know. I don't think that you know, the few moves at the end were bad. Like, starting with queen takes c3, why do you have to trade queens on c3? Um, why not wait for... Why not wait and keep the tension there, basically? Okay, nice sob. Let's go with something different because I've been playing the Sicilian a lot lately. I did play a Scandinavian with knight f6 earlier. Um, hey, what's up? I'm a glorified Fide master. That's what I feel like, but we can get back, you know, to, to the strength I once had. Um, e4, g6, d4, bishop, g7. It's, uh, it's been kind of pretty tough year for me. I haven't gained any rating points, and um, I really wanted to get back over ELO 2400. But I was thinking, you know, not to make excuses for myself, but I've played a lot of strong tournaments. I mean, the few tournaments that I played this year were, you know, three GM norm tournaments and the Zalakarish Open, where everyone I played was under under 30 years and like seven out of nine were under 20. Um, I played basically four strong tournaments. If I were to, if I were to go out and, and search for like kind of fishy weak open tournaments, I could probably pick up rating points, but instead I've played, I played really the, the toughest tournaments I could play, um, four, four strong tournaments this year. Then when I go and I play in the Hungarian Team Championship and the Budapest Team Championship, I start picking rating points back up. 
But I think the secret, if you want to gain rating points, is to play like old, weak players. Um, all right, so nice hab. This is funny, this, this variation. I think I actually had a game with Nefidov in this too. There are players playing queen e2 here, I think. Um, stopping knight takes e4. So theoretically, I'm supposed to play this. And I think that's like equalizing for black, but it's, it's still kind of dynamic. But anyways, I played four tournaments this year that I think made me made me tougher. So although at the end of the end of the day, um, I didn't gain any rating points. Um, we could make a case that I made myself tougher um, in the process of not gaining any rating points. Um, yeah, this is this is equal. It may be possible to play c5. Knight d7 looks okay. I don't think he can really hold on to the pawn after c5. This is probably like quote unquote theory. But, you know, you won't find any grandmasters playing this with white because it doesn't promise white much. You know, two, well, a pawn and a piece are traded off the board. Black is basically equalizing with c5, but you'll probably find some amateur games from this position, and it's it's objectively about equal. I don't know what the best move is now. I think I have to get this pawn back. So there's no time to do knight d7. I have to play queen c7, and um, I'm guessing this is like equal. I'm not sure I've played this exact position in blitz. I don't play the modern defense too much. Um, over the board. We'll definitely find this a few games from this position, but again, I don't think we're going to find any games by any famous players. What is the name of this? Well, it's a modern defense, you know, e4, g6, d4, bishop, g7. It could also, actually, it's not. Um, because I played knight f6 and, and d6, it became a Pierce defense. The Czech Grandmaster Vasya Pierce. No, not Czech. He was um. He was Slovenian, I think. All right, never mind. I'm going to shut up now because I'm saying things that aren't true. I think Pierce was what what would be now today Slovenia. Um, quite different from Czech. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, maybe it was all the Habsburg monarchy back then. <laughs> I don't know when Pierce's uh, lifespan was exactly. Well, probably post Habsburg monarchy, the forties and fifties or something. Thirties, forties, fifties. All right. Anyway, Nysab plays a really solid game, man. I mean, this is like hard to play for a win here against anybody. I don't care what the rating is. There's just not a lot going on. How's black supposed to play for a win in this type of position? Um, pretty tough to do. You just started playing three weeks ago. Well, that is very recent. Chess is, uh, is something that takes, what's the, quote is that poker it takes five minutes to learn and a lifetime to master um chess takes most people more than five minutes to learn but anyway uh it definitely takes a lifetime to master except unless you're like a child prodigy or something all right knight d4 well you know here's one of those practical situations where you know i can consider saying you know too much I can consider trying to keep the pieces on the board Knight e5 is interesting but his knight on d4 is strong 
It's like he's playing for a draw uh, by trading pieces, which is going to be hard to stop. Knight a5, allowing that knight to just remain there powerfully in the center on d4. Nice time's beaten me twice. In a 7 plus 2, and in a simul game. Okay, a lot of people beat me in simuls. I just don't have anything here. Just it's just equal, you know. I mean, I would challenge any grandmaster showing me how how to possibly beat a seventeen hundred player with black in this position. I mean, it's it's extremely difficult. He's just vacuuming all the pieces off the board, and uh, he's going to have to make some kind of catastrophic mistake to lose this game. Basically, you know, he could just get outplayed in a totally equal position somehow, but. You know, I said this before about Naisab. I, I thought that he's capable of playing much better than his rating. The same with Nefidov. And I have noticed a lot of players on Lee Chess. I mean, I'm playing guys who are like 1,700. Here he just dropped a piece. So that's what we're talking about. Okay, the only way he could lose this game is by making some kind of catastrophic mistake. Um, that definitely qualifies. He's pushing a little too hard to try to draw. And I think you need to just relax and play the best moves, not think about, um, you know, not think about, like, concretely have to play for a draw. Um, almost have a tactic here, but it doesn't work. Bishop takes f2 check. Oh, it does work. Okay. I was looking at queen c5, but there's another common denominator here on f6. But, I mean, this is ridiculous. It was absolutely like a dead draw um, if he doesn't play bishop d4. There's no way anybody should lose that position. But people get nervous when they're playing a higher rated player. They're like, oh, it's a draw, it's a draw, you know, and then, and then they try too hard to force a draw. There's a famous game where Vera Menchik lost against Capablanca. She was basically trying too hard to trade all the pieces off. Um, look at this now. Probably, I shouldn't even play the best move in this position. If I find myself in this situation against um, a lower rated player in the future, um, maybe we should give serious consideration to not playing knight takes e4. Because the best move actually allows like absolute equality. Knight takes e4, knight takes e4, d5. Here's a game on Drake and actually beat Donald Dubov last year. <laughs> Which is kind of weird because, you know, I don't know why Dubov would would play this line. He's a very creative player. Um, it looks like the majority of players preferred knight d7 to c5. All right. Yeah, so there are games. And instead of queen takes c5, it looks like I can try something like knight d7. But keep in mind, if I play knight d7, he has this move, you know, dynamizing the pawn structure with c6. Here's a game Willie Watson lost to Robert Bellin in 1997. This exact position. Um, you know, both are strong players. Watson a little bit stronger, but still he lost with black, you know, after c6, b takes c6. So I chose to just take the pawn back, but the problem is this is, this is absolutely equal. Um, if anything, white has an infinitesimal advantage here. So how am I going to win in this position? Peter really likes bishop g5. Okay, I think it's a little better for white. I, I don't really have anything here. You know, how am I going to win this? If he plays something like bishop g5, rook takes d1, or even bishop f6, draw. There's no way black can win this position against, you know, solid play. So in the future, I would, um, but perhaps at one time donation to the channel, you don't have PayPal. Is it possible to do it from a credit card? Um, 
I wonder if you can just, you know, even if you don't have PayPal, you can probably make a donation via credit card using PayPal. Um, I would check it. I don't know if you have to have an account, you know, on PayPal. You should probably be able to just make a donation with a credit card to PayPal. But I really appreciate it. Even if you can't do it, you know, I really appreciate the um, the thought. And I want to thank those guys who have donated. Um, Move 11 made a nice donation to the stream this week. So very much thank you guys. Um, but anyways, this is... This is a, a variation, another variation where I should really think about like playing for a win, not playing the best move here with black, you know, probably playing like C6 to keep tension in the position. I think this may be a transposition to an Alakine's defense after E5, Knight D5, something like an Alakine's defense. But here I may just be losing a pawn. Hmm. Uh, never mind. So you have to play, Ooh, that's kind of ugly, Knight E8. I don't like the look of this. Yeah, I don't like the look of this. Looks like some people have played bishop g4. Gashimov is definitely a player to follow. Fortunately, he passed away, but um, Gashimov is, was a fantastic opening, uh, opening player. Base after base, you're challenging me to a plus two, but we're playing seven plus three maximum. Guys, we have time for just like two more games. I'm going to play another game of Troll in a Roll here because he's the only challenger. Um, we've got time for one more challenge after this. So base after base, just uh, too long the time control. 7 plus 3 is the maximum. Um, hey, Soltigo, what's up, man? Thanks for joining us. I know it's kind of early for you. You can add the credit card to your PayPal account, but do you need a PayPal account? Do you need to have a PayPal account, you know, in place? in the first place or can you just can you just you know make a donation to someone on PayPal that's the question without having a pre set up PayPal account okay troll and roll this is our second game today but I didn't have any other challengers so I'm gonna just the other thing that I was thinking was um, about my own game you know I need to just kind of go with my intuition more when I lost to Sedlac last week I had him basically dead to rights and then I second guessed myself like in an overwhelming position I started to convince myself that I wasn't overwhelming you know and I think it's a matter of confidence but also just you've got to really trust your intuition um, it's very important if you can't trust your intuition as a player you're kind of nowhere you know I mean after playing for 30 years even if I'm not that active lately, I should really, you know, be able to trust myself and play faster, not have to analyze everything. One thing I think that's bad, I like to play the long games, the long blitz and, and stuff here and, and commentating the games and doing the streams the longer games, but I think I also need to play faster blitz too, because in the faster blitz, you're forced to just kind of use your intuition. You just can't calculate everything. You basically start playing on absolute intuition, like you were kind of drunk or something, you know? Like when you're drunk playing Blitz, um, calculation kind of goes out the window, you know? Tal was like, from what I heard, you know, I didn't get to meet him. He was in Boston in 1989 and I didn't, I didn't get there till 1990. Um, but a lot of my friends met Tal when he was like playing Blitz with them and, and they said that he, he basically, um, was was capable of playing like insanely good blitz even when he was totally drunk because his intuition was so good that he didn't even have to calculate i mean it, it was just like even totally wasted his his trust in himself and his just intuitive understanding of the game was too great you know so i need to to get back in touch with with playing quickly playing with intuition it looks like troll here. Um, has a weakness on on the white squared diagonal that I'm trying to trying to exploit, but I think I just blundered so much for my intuition. <sighs> too much intuition is a bad thing too. Uh oh. All right. 
Well, I should have played knight g3 first. This this was a this was a tactical mistake. Knight g3 and then h4 h5 if I have time. Don't play chess while drunk. Don't play poker while drunk. Do I need to tell <laughs> Chess is one thing, you know. Don't play tournament chess while you're drunk. <laughs> That's probably what we should qualify um, as the rule. But um, blitz is another thing. Your overall results are not going to be good, but you're definitely going to tap into your creative, you know, other other illegal substances are on the list as well. But um, h4 would be good. Now I'm going to have to play h4, e4, h5, e takes f3, h takes g6. Um, pawn takes e2 check. Maybe it's not bad for me at all, actually. You know, sometimes we just accidentally stumble on something, but I think there's another problem. We have another problem. Okay, e4, h5, knight f4. And then what's what's troll doing? Yeah, I'm just losing a pawn here. We have a... We have a totally unsound. This is a nightmare. It may be best for me to just not even play h5. I think he got disconnected or something. He can't be thinking that long in this position. I mean, e4, knight e4, knight takes h4, knight g3, b6, and I'm just lost just down a pawn for nothing. Now, I'm giving these lectures about intuition, but you have to tame it, you know, you have to tame it in a little bit. <laughs> this is a little too much. Um, all right. H5, knight f4, knight e4, knight takes h5. We just got to make the best of a bad situation here. We'll try to kick his knight out to. Um, we'll try to kick his knight out to h5, where it's hopefully a little bit out of play. That's about the best I can do here. Can I exploit the knight on h5? Possible. This was not expected. And I think it may be a mistake. Why is that good for black? This was the first thing I looked at too, but to be perfectly honest, he's only helping me. So this was a catastrophic mistake. I mean, you had knight f4, everything's good. In this case, now you've traded off your active rook on e8. Okay, it's not game over. But I'm instead of worse, I'm better now. This is huge. So guys, one more challenge after this, then I've got to go. Um, should be a very good position for white. Really close to winning. Threatening. Um, I wonder if queen f5 was worth playing. No, they need to have 97. I'm threatening maybe bishop g4, maybe. <laughs> sort of. He didn't actually meet the threat. 
I thought that b6 and bishop c6 was essential. Okay, he can lose the exchange and play on. This is probably worse. Trill got tired. I think he can only play one game per stream. Um, that was a quick one. But I'm just giving these lectures about intuition. Bishop a3 there. I didn't see that. So I need to play knight g3. But I got inspired and played h4. And this is, this is looking like a blunder. Unless I missed something here. Wow. So surprising that there's some kind of resource for me, which I wouldn't have found. Um, knight f4. I was looking at knight d4, followed by knight takes h5, g3, trying to corral his knight. But this looks like it's just nothing. My knight, look at my knight. That doesn't make sense. G4 is actually better. I'm lo I've lost a pawn here, um, but apparently I have an unbelievable move, E3, which I never would have found in a million years. Well, okay. I mean, taking on F3 is nothing. I mean, but this is the question. I'm just like losing a pawn. Now I have G4. That's insanely cool. Well, that changes everything. So by complete luck, I was okay here because of, because of this e3 move. <laughs> um, pawn takes f3, e takes f4. I'm not that in love with this either. Rook takes, king takes, pawn takes g2. Or he just leaves this here actually. Whew, that's kind of nasty. He could even play b6. Unclear, this is hanging. Um, so anyway, troll. You missed bishop a3, though, it looks like, right away. Um, this is even stronger. Perhaps. Well, I have h5 there. So it's it's kind of interesting. Um, according to Lee Chess, six a.m. there. Oh, you're in the U.S. So, knight knight g3 or Canada. Or Mexico or somewhere <laughs> maybe South America um, no not, not g3 but not g3 has been played somebody played g3 that's grotesque you can't do g3 with your knight on h1 man um, okay we got challenges here from Nefidab Masu and, and Soltigo but um, I'm gonna take the challenge from Soltigo for our, our last game because he's a subscriber and Nefidab already played a game um, this is our moderator, Soltigo. If you don't get to play, guys, I will try to play you next time. We're trying to play the English opening today, kind of. Maybe we'll do that in the future. Try to have like kind of theme openings um, in in particular streams. There's really no way to stop the uh, stop the Queen's Gambit. There's also the interesting Bishop B4. I, I don't know what it's called. This is not a good move for black. Definitely not a good move. He's playing the queen's gambit with a knight on e7 instead of a knight on f6. Not recommended. I wonder if the best move is the obvious e4 though. You know, maybe I'm better off waiting a moment and not playing that right away. He doesn't really have a way to stop e4. So there's no hurry. This kind of looks like, you know, one of those games you see in an old book. Alekin versus No Name. Simul, Buenos Aires, 1918 or something like that. Um, Rubinstein won a game against somebody I remember where he just like ripped apart the dark squares <laughs> That was a little different though. I'm thinking of a different position 
I mean, if he puts the knight on g6, welcome to my h pawn. You know, this this is the classic problem. I mean, I think the only way to justify this would be to try to play a kind of hippopotamus with like g6 and bishop g7. That's the only way you can really try to legitimize the knight on e7. We might have time for one more game. Intuition is a theme for today. Wow, c5. If Salty goes intuition told him to play knight e7, we need to have an intuition tune up. c5. Um, I mean, Saltigo hasn't been playing the game for 30 years. He's a very creative player, but he doesn't have the kind of experience, you know, that guides your intuition. He uses like ingenuity and, uh, and creativity, which is different from intuition. Um, thinking about weird stuff here, grabbing the pawn really ought to be, ought to be an idea. I mean, I think that's consequent. E697. Well, it's kind of an extreme way to get out of book. Maybe a little later. But again, it's not so bad if you do something like maybe b6 or g6 and bishop g7, but then the central pawn push with the knight on e7, it's almost like you're, what happened? You're, you're trying to play classical chess and hypermodern chess at the same time, which probably doesn't make sense. Okay, now d4, I'm taking said pawn. Should I take with a knight, though? I guess that's a good question. If I take with a knight, he has some weird moves like knight c6. You know, I think I should take with the queen. Now, he doesn't trade queens. I don't want to waste time. That's very important here. There's a smothered mate. But he has knight f5, stopping that, you know. So, I mean, bishop f4 looks like a good move. Then knight f5, he's going to get his pawn back, but at what price? We could also just try to hold onto the pawn with b4. However, then a5, things start getting kind of weird. There's also e4. All right, let's just go with development. Now, if you'd have suggested e4, normally when something like d takes c5 happens, yes, Soltigo, like knight a6 should be an idea. Where to put my queen now? D2 is the safe square. Yeah, this doesn't look outright lost for black. It's almost making some kind of sense. The problem is that knight f5 is met by e4 now though, you know, so he doesn't really have a comfortable, uh, plan. Knight, knight c8, maybe, but it's dubious because of knight e4. I don't think we can justify black's opening. Um, he's basically down a pawn without enough compensation. So guys, the next stream will be hopefully Monday. But I want to reserve the right to cancel because it's New Year's morning. And I don't know how, what kind of shape things are going to be in here. Um, but I promise 100% absolutely, Sazalik, 
if we want to say it in Hungarian, that uh, we will certainly be streaming on Tuesday with a viewer uh, tournament. Look at those dark squares, man. The web of dark squares. The most instructive games of chess ever played. Rubenstein has a game where he just strangled the guy on the dark squares. Um, that looks like that's what's happening here. There's two mates. Ooh, this is going to be ugly. Does he have some kind of saving resource? Well, it's not it's not like a forced win. He had bishop g7 there, which probably very likely was even stronger. Um, probably very likely. Feels like there's a forced win here for white, but I still don't see it. A lot of really ugly positions. Bishop g5. You could just play knight d6 check. There's also g4. Ooh. I think there that's um that's a problem. One of many strong moves for white here. I mean, knowing Soltigo, he'll probably try to sacrifice a piece somehow. But how? Even if he tries to sacrifice a piece, something like bishop g7, I take on f5 and I'm, I'm threatening other nasty stuff. Probably his best. Play bishop g7, give up a piece, just be down a piece. Um, I actually can speak Hungarian, but it's pretty bad. My grammar is horrible, and uh, I wouldn't call it speaking Hungarian. I mean, I'm basically like kindergarten level, but I, you know, can communicate after being here for quite a while. G4. I don't know, man. I mean, I feel like I should have played something different. You know, like bishop g5, bishop e7, knight d6 check, knight takes d6, bishop takes d7, queen takes d7, pawn takes d6. I'm, though then again, he could do some weird stuff like king f8. I can't win overwhelmingly by force, I don't think. Yeah, of course he sacks a piece here. This is the best practical try. We've got to, um, we've got to give him credit. Um, although I think recapturing might be a mistake. I really expected you to, I expected you to not recapture Soltigo. I think objectively, not recapturing was more dangerous for me. Now we've got everything gunning down on him. Except for my bishop on f1. That's my extra piece, actually. Um, how is that extra piece going to play? This is pretty sad, you know. My extra bishop. Fortunately, he has a lot of other problems. Like, almost getting mated. And the fact that his bishop will be hanging all the time on d7. So everybody's in the game now. Except for Mr. Bishop. We could try to play e4, blast it open. I'm basically having fun here. Threatening knight takes b7 with game over. Um, or knight b7. It doesn't have to be knight takes b7 to be effective. Whew, this is ugly. All right. I guess I'll be fancy here. Probably a bad decision. Um, well, it doesn't really save him, does it? 
He's good with the made in one type of ideas. That's why we call him Subtle Tigo. Oh, goodness. He still has that. Wait. Not another queen sacrifice. I could have played rook takes g7, but then he has rook takes g7, then knight takes. Not so clear. He's going to sacrifice his queen again? No, he just resigned. <laughs> he resigned. We're winning. Um, no queen sacrifices here. Okay. Yeah, so nobody ever did this in a serious master game. But it looks like Freeze Nielsen did play this once. Wow. Recently, in 2015. That guy must be nuts. It's like a Danish IM. Um, I think it's an older guy. So this guy has played it twice. And some old Hungarian player who I don't know, probably deceased from the early 90s, um, have actually played this. This guy from Singapore played it against Nick Pert. Can't see playing this for black, really. But I think you should try something based on g6 right away. c5 is really asking for it. So I just take... Yeah, this is crazy, the d4 move. I mean, these moves are crazy, c5 and d4. Basically handing over pawns. Um, it looks like most people went here and tried to play a weird kind of Chigorin. That looks like your best bet, Soltigo. If you're going to play d5, you just play some kind of weird, very weird Chigorin. Um, after bishop f4, knight g6, bishop g3, this makes sense. White should be better. I mean, that knight is going to be subject to uh, harassment charges. So, anyways, guys, we'll be back on Tuesday for sure. Possible stream on Monday, but I'm not going to guarantee it. Arsenal fan, Rich, sorry you, you just uh, you just arrived as we're finishing down. Um, but anyway, Soul Tigo, a little too creative. Subtle, subtle Tigo. You didn't even have your coffee yet. It's really early for him. It's like 6 o'clock in the morning, guys. So... I will, um, I will forgive you. We will be back um, Tuesday night for sure. Viewer tournament, probably seven plus two. And I might try to, I might try to do a Monday stream. We'll see how we're feeling. I'm going to reserve judgment on that. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you for sure on Tuesday night. International Master William Pascal. We're signing off from Lee Chess and Twitch. Thanks for supporting the stream with donations via PayPal. Again, thanks Move11. Um, thanks Nysop for the offer. If you can or, or can't, you know, make a donation, I still appreciate it. The um, the other thing is my YouTube channel. You can check out the uploads of the stream over there, video chess training on YouTube. And otherwise, guys, we'll see you. Have fun, and I'll see you on Tuesday night. Bye bye.